morning, dear friends. Welcome to our online service, January 10, 2021. I'm Pastor Caesar David, Minister of Union Park United Methodist Church in Des Moines, Iowa. We are so glad that you've taken this time to join with us in this online service. Today we um, are observing Baptism of the Lord Sunday. And as we remember the baptism of Jesus Christ, we're also remembering our own baptism. And a little later in this service, we'll have time to specifically remember our baptism and to think and meditate about all that it implies for us uh, today. Uh, come join with me in praising the Lord. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Word of God, speak, for your servants are listening. Spirit of creation and renewal, hover over us this day as you hovered over creation on that first day. Enter into our hearts and our lives as you did the day of our baptism. Descend on us like a dove as you did on Jesus' day of baptism, that we may hear again your words of love and adoption. Speak from the heavens into our minds that we may perceive your words of guidance and wisdom. Let us join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. These are the following announcements. As soon as we are able to meet in person, we would like to start another confirmation class. If you or anyone you know between the ages of 13 to 14 is interested, please notify Pastor Caesar or the office for more information. If you are interested in being liturgist for the worship services, please contact Lisa Potter to be put on a schedule. The Ad Council will be be meeting soon to decide about when we can get back to in-person services. As soon as they decide, they will let us know. Good morning. The praise band is going to sing Your Grace is Enough by Matt Maher. Oh, man. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and provision throughout this last week. We thank you for this opportunity to worship, to come in your presence, bringing ourselves before you with all our gratitude and joy, fears and questions. Please speak to us today and help us to hear your voice. Today we bring before you these dear people who are celebrating their birthdays, Donna Paitner, Kelly Dale, Nathan Clement. Thank you for blessing them with your presence and protection. Please continue to bless them and be with them in the next year also to experience more of your grace and, and love. We also pray for these dear people who need your healing touch. Lynn Ball, Bob Irvin, Cindy Brown, Reverend Bob and Linda Kelly, their friends Connie and Mark, Linda Shriver, Jan Birkenbein, Elaine and Don Burke, Jaylee and Marvin Barton, David Binner, Robert Zass, Gladys Kohler, Trevon Egret, Lyman Michael, Nancy Burgett, Lisa Gift, Joe Clough. As they struggle with various infirmities, we bring them before your throne of grace and mercy, asking for your divine peace and presence to heal and comfort them, so that despite the circumstances, they may continue to feel your love and be strengthened with the joy that only you can bring to them. Today, as we are thinking of our baptisms, thank you for the blessing of belonging to your family, to be surrounded by your love and that of your people. May this time of worship bring us closer to you and closer to each other as well. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning is Psalm 29, the voice of God in a great storm. Ascend to the Lord, O heavenly beings, Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon like a calf, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes in the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare, and in his temple all say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. And the New Testament reading is in Mark chapter 1 verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the throng of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Naz Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart, and the Spirit descended on him like a dove. And the voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, and you I am well pleased. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord, my Rock and my Redeemer. Amen. Friends, today we are commemorating the baptism of the Lord. It's also the day when we remember our own baptisms, obviously not in that sense because most of us were babies when we were baptized. Uh, we may remember some of it from seeing photographs that our family showed later 
or when our family talked about it. But we do understand what baptism is about from our confirmation class, from what our parents taught us, and from what our Sunday school teachers have taught us. It is uh, becoming a member of God's family. If you're not yet baptized, uh, we invite you to, to join the church and or to meet with us, have fellowship with us, to attend Bible studies and to understand God's love for you and God's plan for forgiveness and salvation and eternal life that he has offered as a free gift to each one of you. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For those of us who are baptized, like I said, we might not remember that exact day when we were babies. Uh, it's not important to remember that, but it's just important to remember that we are baptized and to understand what that meant for us and what it continues to mean to us. It's very important for us to know that, or what that implies, especially in our current socio-cultural context. So unlike Holy Communion, the sacrament of, of baptism is not a repeatable event. And in the United Methodist Church, we allow for baptism only once in a lifetime because um, we hold that position because this sacrament of baptism is a means of initial grace, symbolizing and actualizing God's universal call for all of us children to respond in faith. So what that means is that baptism is God's action, not our action. And in baptism we receive and we are empowered to respond to God's grace with faith. It's an outward sign of inward grace. Several things happen when we are baptized. Following what Jesus said in Mark 10, in baptism we die, as Jesus did, and then we rise again. And so we, we, when we arise again, we are raised to a new life. References for this can be found in Romans 6, 3 to 5, Colossians 2, 11 and 12, Titus 3, 5. In baptism, we also become Christ's body, part of Christ's body. Paul writes that, for by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, 1 Corinthians 12, 13. And then he goes on to say that because we are baptized into one body, now there are no more any differences, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, we were all made to drink from the one spirit. And Galatians 3.27 also expresses it as being clothed with Christ. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And as we continue studying in the, in the New Testament, our understanding of what baptism means for us continues to unfold. And it always follows the path of a faith, the faith of the person who is baptized. Um, Acts 8, 13 and 36, we have Philip baptizing the eunuch. Or we have the account of the faith of the parents in Acts 16, 15, 30 to 33, 18, 8, 1 Corinthians 1, 16. And all of these scriptures tell about the various ways in which people have experienced the grace of God in baptism and have been able to respond in different ways with different expressions of love and obedience. For our brief meditation today, I only want to point to a couple of things related to baptism that I think is important for us to understand in our, in our current context. Uh, baptism, of course, means new life in Christ. There is new hope. We live by a new set of principles, a new value system. We have new responsibilities and, of course, new privileges, all of that. But the two things I want to specifically point to today are one is that we have a new identity. Uh, Galatians 3, 27 to 28, it says, As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. What that means is that we shed our differences and we become one.
So spiritually our identity is Christian. We are one body, we no longer operate under old obligations, old fears, old feelings, and a sense of an old image. Very often it is our experience that we feel pressured to define ourselves, to find our identity according to what we do. It could be our jobs, it could be our financial status, it could be our success, our grades, our appearance, and what other people say about us. And we try to find our identity according to um, uh, these things that surround us. But what happens to our identity when we experience failure? or lose someone's favor, or we become burned out and we fail. If we live out an identity based on how God sees us, then all of these external circumstances will not matter to our image and our identity because we no longer feel the need to define ourselves uh, according to our external circumstances or even find our value and our worth according to these external circumstances. Having a new identity is as God's child, a precious child, a valuable child, loved and sanctified by God, and that is enough. It frees us up to live confidently and stably instead of changing who we are based on the opinion of others, based on our external circumstances, our professional success, or even uh, defining ourselves from what uh, the standards that people set for us. So it gives us an opportunity to experience God's unconditional love in new and fresh ways. And therefore it allows us to feel confident and to boldly share God's love with other people. So we have a new identity. We live according to that identity and that value that we have now because of that identity. Secondly, it means a new relationship. When Jesus was baptized, the Spirit descended like a, like a dove on him, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. Mark 1, 10 to 11. As, you, as we become members of Christ, of, of God's family, through baptism, we become God's sons and daughters. We have a relationship with God whereby we can call him Father, we can call on him any time. We get to be sons and daughters of the King of Kings. The knowledge that we have God as our Father frees us from all worries, from all fears, because now we know that our Father, God, is watching over us. He knows what we need. He loves us, and so he will provide. He knows when it is the right time to give to us, the right way in which it is to give to us, the very best that he has in store for us. And he is watching over us. The other relationship that we have because of baptism is with other children of God. The other children of God, they're our brothers and sisters. We're in the same family now, and so we have a mutual responsibility, and we have a common mission. And this means that we can no longer operate under maybe the old hatred that we once felt, or the divisive thoughts that we may have once had, because now uh, we are no longer estranged. We are part of that same family, enjoying the same privileges as, uh, as that one family of God. And so today as we are thinking of the baptism of the Lord and we are thinking about our own baptisms, I want to leave uh, this, these questions with you. Ask yourself, do I live and operate under a new identity? Or do I have the old me cropping up every now and then? What does it mean for me to be a Christian in day-to-day -day living? What are the implications of me being a child of God and belonging to the family of God? Think about that word, family. Now you're part of God's family. What does it imply? God bless you, and may God help us to respond with faith and with love as we are remembering our baptism and as we uh, seek to do all that we can so that we, as part of the family of God, can not only enjoy 
our privileges as sons and daughters and brothers and sisters, but that we can also be a support to other people in this family. God bless you. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for the freedom and power we have because we are your family. Empower us to rise above all that threatens to destroy our integrity as your children. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Friends, today as we remember the baptism of the Lord and we're remembering our own baptism, there is a congregational reaffirmation of the baptismal covenant that I want to go through with you very briefly. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we're initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. At the time when we were baptized, maybe our parents took these vows for us, and then explain these to us later on. And at the time of confirmation, or if you we were baptized when we were older, we may have taken these vows ourselves. But basically, we have renounced sin, and we have professed our faith. And today is a day when we remember all of that. Um, just a summary of what we have renounced and what we have professed. We have renounced the spiritual forces of wickedness, rejected the evil powers of this world, and have repented of our sins. We have also accepted the freedom and power that God gives us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. We have also confessed Jesus Christ as our Savior, put our whole trust in His grace, and we have promised to serve Him as our Lord, in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. And then we have promised, according to the grace given to us, to remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and to serve as Christ's representatives in this world. At this time, let's... Um, Listen to the sound of water flowing in the baptismal font and allow it to speak to us to remind us of when we were purified and made new and when we got new life, new perspective, new direction and new objectives as part of the family of God. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your Spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection, and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit, and by this gift of water call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism, for you have washed away our sins and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. 
All praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Remember your baptism and be thankful. The Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through the water and the Spirit that you may live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us rejoice in the faithfulness of our covenant God. We give thanks for all that God has already given us as members of the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We will faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. <laughs> 